Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and today I will be showing you different ways to connect to your Pi. So let's get started. So for a while now, I always thought that if you're starting to play with Raspberry Pi, it was pretty much uh, common knowledge knowing how to connect to a Raspberry Pi. But yeah, I actually got quite a few comments on how to connect to a Raspberry Pi. So here I am doing this tutorial. So there are a couple of ways that you can connect to a Raspberry Pi. Uh, one, the most common would be SSH or secure shell. Now, if you're planning to use this as a headless Raspberry Pi, which means not connecting any keyboard or mouse or even an HDMI connector to it, uh, there are multiple ways to do this. One which is the most common is initially when you set it up, you would have to connect everything just so you could go through the setup prompts to get this going. The second way, which is the most common way that I use this is to actually insert a file called SSH into the boot directory or the boot folder of your Raspberry Pi. Once you set that option in, you don't even have to plug in a monitor at all and it will automatically activate SSH through the Raspberry Pi. To connect to this through Windows, I use a software called Putty. Now, once you download Putty, you could just insert the IP of your Raspberry Pi and it will get connected right away using the username Pi and password Raspberry. Now, the second way to connect to it, as of April 2016, they have VNC baked right into Raspberry Pi, so it's already pre-installed. Once you go through Raspberry Pi config, you can now set through the options and enable VNC server. Once that is done, you can connect to your Pi through a VNC viewer, which I'll leave all the links in the description below. Now, I got a couple of comments where this doesn't work or a VNC server doesn't want to start automatically. Now, to solve that problem, you will first have to go into activating the frame buffer mode. Now, without HDMI plugged into your device, it doesn't know what resolution or what properties to set for your display. So VNC will just not start. That's why we're setting this frame buffer mode. Now, go back into the config.txt in your boot and then go find that option that says frame buffer. Uncomment those and set to re whatever resolution you need, whether being 1080 or uh, 720 or whatever it is. Once you set that mode, restart the Raspberry Pi and VNC will now start as a service. And then you can connect to whatever resolution you set. Now, like I said earlier, you could download VNC Viewer, pop in the IP and the username is Pi and the password is whatever you set it to be. Usually would be Raspberry for the first time. Now, the third way to connect to your Pi would be SSH with X forwarding. I use this a lot because I don't want to run a full desktop using VNC because it takes up a lot of bandwidth. So what I would end up doing is installing the software called Ming WG, I believe, or MG. I'll leave a link in the description for that. And also setting PuTTY to allow X forwarding. Now to speed up the connection a little bit, you could enable compression, but at the cost of CPU cycle. So it's up to you whatever you're planning to do. Once you get that going, you can now log into your Pi like you normally would. But now you could actually type in any GUI application, being it's Genie or even Chromium. And once you kick that in, it will display a GUI application like it's physically on your desktop. So guys, I hope you found this video informative and you learned something from it. If you guys already know all these steps and have more ways to connect to it, I would like to hear it in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. So I also started a new Facebook group and I'll leave a link in the description for that. I wanna be able to start a conversation with you guys. So head over there, sign up. I don't know what you do with that. You just like it or join it or something like that. And we'll see how that goes. So if you guys are new to this channel, welcome and consider subscribing. You could also hit that little bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.